welcome it has been quite a while since we had our last class but today we are here again as we prepare to learn something to do with network analysis and to be precise we are going to talk about how to draw a network diagram we actually have an extract from a Casne past paper that was done on 2010 December question 4a but before we examine the question I would like us to recall on some two key aspects here which are actually going to guide us on what to do in the drawing of the diagram. A network analysis is basically a planning tool used to control a project. As you try to control a particular project, we are talking about time analysis which includes forward pass and backward pass. Now, our steps are going to involve these two particular terms here. When we talk about forward pass, we are talking about the addition of an activity duration to the beginning to arrive at the ending. So for example, these particular activities here, we are given their durations here. We'll add the duration of these each activity to their starting nodes in order to give or to achieve or to arrive at the ending nodes. Remember project will normally have two types of node that is the starting node and the ending node. And then after that we will do what is known as the backward pass which is the reverse of forward pass in which we are going to talk about the subtraction of activity duration from the ending to arrive at the beginning. Now after we have Arrive, after we have achieved the ending node, we will now work backwards as we try to subtract the same same duration from the ending in order to arrive at the, at the beginning. And away from these two particular aspects, we talk about a network diagram involving two nodes. And before you draw a particular network or activity for a particular project, we always look at the activities versus their predecessors. Now, what are predecessors? These are actually activities which must be undertaken in order for the corresponding activity to begin. For example, activity B has a predecessor as A. It means we cannot start activity B before activity A is completed. The same way applies to activity J, for example. We must first finish activity I for J to begin. And then one of the basic rules of drawing network diagram is when an activity does not have a predecessor, it, it means that it normally begins from zero node, like A does not have a predecessor so it will begin from zero node and again another observation is that activities which does not have any duration are termed as dummy activities now what are dummy activities these are activities which does not consume any resources because actually they they take zero duration and therefore there is no resources which are going to be consumed and we are actually going to see how to highlight those dummy activities. So when we start drawing activity A, as I said, because it does not have any predecessor, it means that we are going to begin from zero. And this is how we are going to highlight our diagram. So when we have we normally have the earliest starting node and the latest starting node. An activity can either start early or late. And because activity A is zero, we begin from zero. And then we talk about now we are going to have activity A all the way. Then we highlight this activity A as given here. Duration is six weeks. We write 6, we have the same, same format. So how do we get the next starting node for the next activity? It means we are going to add the duration 
that uh, this activity took we took zero from zero to plus six we have six remember these lower sections are meant for the backward pass we are now doing what is known as the forward pass which involves addition of the duration from the beginning to arrive at the and the ending so the ending the beginning of this activity a is zero and then the ending is six so we add duration from the beginning to arrive at the ending and that is what back uh, forward pass entails then you see activity b now before you draw any activity sequence you should always check if that activity if it is a predecessor of another activity you have to check on that for example b is a predecessor of activity a so it means as soon as activity uh, i mean activity d as soon as activity b will be completed it means that we are going to have activity d but another scenario whereby activity f is another predecessor of activity h and f and g must be completed together in order for h to complete it means that is a different scenario on which you are going to actually understand how to draw that so b begins as soon as a completes so we are going to have b in that way but now because we have activity c again beginning as soon as a completes it means that activity a has two other activities which depends on its completion so we have b and c so we have we are going to have two scenarios of activity b taking one week and then we have activity c taking two weeks remember we are supposed to be using the arrows to show on the direction that is supposed to be followed then for us to go to activity d now d begins as soon as b completes okay so it means when we have now activity b and because it takes one week the next activity will begin after taking six plus one which is seven and then this one again will begin as soon as we take six plus two which is eight then now we are going to have activity d which de uh, depends on b completion so we are going to have it here d depending on b completion So we have activity D taking a duration of one week. So it means it will, it will end at eight weeks, seven plus one. And then after that, we have activity E, which begins as soon as activity D ends. And remember activity E is again affected with activity I. So when we go to this particular session, we will take the one which takes the longest duration. In forward pass, we pick that activity which takes the longest duration like now of course we are going to have after that we shall have activity e activity e taking a duration of one week again and then it completes at nine eight plus one then we have activity f now activity f is a dummy activity and this dummy activity begins as soon as b is completed and remember we have activity b in this case so it means our activity f <coughs> will be shown by a dummy activity we use dotted lines to illustrate that that particular activity is a dummy activity because it does not consume any resources then of course that is f it actually consumes zero time we indicate that way then now because we have g depending on c 
remember g depends on c trees means g will begin as soon as c ends so it will be somewhere here and the same same g is affecting h so the point where f and g complete h will begin f g completing then h beginning so it means when you have f and g so we'll have such a scenario we have g taking a duration of one week now in this particular scenario we take that activity i remember when you're talking about the forward pass we have activity f taking a duration of seven plus zero which is seven then activity g taking eight plus one which is nine we take that which has the longest duration which happens to be nine then we have it that way so that will be activity f g then we have h beginning as soon as f g ends and where f g ends in this particular here and again look at h affects activity i as soon as e completes so between e and h we are going to have some two activities and those are a dummy because activity h does not consume any duration it is going to be a dummy one and where does the dummy lead to it leads to where e is because e and h completes as soon as uh, the previous ones are completed we are going to use dotted lines in that case to illustrate that this is h and it consumes zero resources remember now we have e and h e and h is this one here and the moment e and h is completed we are going to have activity i now activity i will take that particular duration of four weeks and then of course we shall have the duration taken by the last activity plus the duration of i to be 13 then the last activity which now depends on i entirely should be j and activity j should begin as soon as i ends and j takes five weeks if j takes five weeks it means that this whole project duration will take 13 plus 5 which is 18. now that is what is known as the back the forward pass now if you talk about now the backward pass we are going to talk about now the subtraction remember this is now the latest completion time or the earliest finishing time which will be equal to the latest finishing time sorry of 18 weeks after which now we subtract the duration from this one to get 13 then for you to get this particular here we subtract 4 plus 13 we have 9 now when you get here we have some two particular activities remember we have two activities to e and to h so 9 plus 0 is 9 9 plus 1 is 8 then when we get here we have two activities we have 9 plus 0 is 9 then 8 plus 1 is 7 so when we talk about the backward pass we pick that particular value which is the smallest so between 9 and 7 we pick 7 then we talk about this one because we only have one activity is 9 plus 1 which is 8 then again we have two particular scenarios leading to one we have this one converging on one particular activity so 8 plus 2 is 6 then 7 plus 1 is 6 again there's a there's a similarity so we have 6 value 
then of course now six minus six is zero so actually we actually proven our network diagram and that is actually how to do the forward pass at the backward pass now you'll be asked about what is known as the critical path critical path critical path refers to that longest duration which will be undertaken in the whole of that project and there are two ways in which you can actually determine the critical path one is by looking at those activities which have the same starting time and ending time this one must be the same and it happens that all these activities they have the same starting time and ending time so another way is we simply add like we have six from a we have six plus b we have one plus one plus one plus four plus five we have seven eight nine that is thirteen 18. So if you take this path or we take 6 plus 2 now we now take this root now 2 plus 1 plus 0 plus 4 plus 5 again we have 8 9 13, 18, we get here 18, or we can take this root, or we can take 6, but 1 plus 0, now we take the dummy root, 0 plus 0 plus 4 plus 5, we get 7 plus this 11. 16. So it means when you take the dummy root, we cannot have a critical path. Remember, the critical path must always be that long. Yes. So in this particular project, we have two critical paths, which is either this or that. But the perfect one should be the first one because it does not involve the dummy root. So it should be this one here. So this is how we indicate that. We have this, that one, this one that one and then finally that one so this is how do we illustrate the critical path we have a is a to b to d to e to i to j then critical activities Activities we simply use the commas A, B, D, E, I, J. So 18 is the shortest period that this particular project will be will be undertaken in order to arrive at its completion. Thank you. Please don't forget to subscribe.